Namaste. So, it's been a while since I talked just from myself without reference to scriptures. Although, <clears throat> one of the qualities that one develops after so many years of sadhana is called Shastra Chakshush, which means one sees through the scriptures. Literally, it means scripture eyes. So, I uh, can't help but speak in terms of the scriptures because that's my experience. That's how I interpret my experience. That's what gives my experience meaning. So, in the last, oh, couple of months, I moved from the plains up to the hills. Well, we would call them mountains, but in comparison with the real mountains, they're just foothills, really. But anyway, the country up here is gorgeous, as you have seen, if you've been following our channel. And the people are extremely pious and spiritual more than any other part of India where I've been. And everybody I talk to says that. In Uttarakhand, the most pious people, the most spiritual people. <clears throat> so I've been in good association and very much enjoying their company. But along the way, some very interesting things happened. First of all, when I came to Almora and the local goddess there accepted me and blessed me and I had Mahabhava in the temple right in front of the deity and uh, that's why I made that whole series about Mahabhava uh, to explain to people what happened. Uh, because <clears throat> the, from their point of view, it's a trivial thing, but it's not at all trivial. It's extremely profound and deep. So after that experience, I noticed that many desires were leaving me. And I became really attached to just a simple life. And within a couple of weeks, I had moved up here to the village, another uh, almost thousand meters higher altitude. And so many things started happening. Uh, I had about 10 days or two weeks of uh, spiritual disease, spiritual sickness. This is one of the Vyabhichari Bhavas mentioned in the series. You can uh, look at the video or even better, read the book about it. And uh, even at one point, I thought I was going to leave the body. That's another Vyabhichari Bhava. But then when I went to the doctor the next day, he found I had no fever. <laughs> No infection. Huh? He gave me medicine, but it didn't really do anything. <laughs> so it was definitely purification. And uh, then I went to a very powerful temple, a Mahalingam, a Jyotirlingam, uh, one of the 11 or 12 Jyotirlingams in India and was profoundly blessed by the deity, uh, Shiva. And then so many things happened, it's, it's hard to recount them all. First of all, my sciatica disappeared, sciatic pain, uh, which if you know anything about sciatica and lower back pain, this is amazing. Uh, Oh, it's a, a bona fide miracle cure, uh, definitely, spiritual cure. And then after that, <clears throat> coming back 
to stay in the village and going through that sickness of purification. Afterwards, I suddenly and unaccountably developed Shiva Bhakti. Now, a lot of you are going to be surprised or alienated or critical. I don't care. <laughs> to me, it's a miracle because Ma, Durga Ma, had promised me a long time ago in a dream that she would bring me to the lotus feet of Shiva. And, of course, I was already acquainted with Shiva from having lived in Tiruvannamalai for five years. Tiruvannamalai is the place where the column of fire, the Jyotirlingam, that manifested to Vishnu and Brahma in the beginning of the creation, uh, that after that pastime was concluded, <clears throat> the Jyotirlingam was uh, made small, and uh, so that became our Nachala Hill. So I lived in that place, right at the base of the hill, right at the feet of Shiva, for five years. And those of you who follow this channel know that I went through profound and deep changes and experiences uh, right across the street, literally, from an ancient Durga temple. And so, so many things changed for me. I learned the Advaita philosophy, which is the perfection of Vedanta. I made so many videos about it. I performed so many beautiful rituals for the mother, the cosmic mother, and I got tremendous results. I was initiated into the Sodashi Mantra, Maha Sodashi Mantra, which I still continue to chant today. And that was when I received the promise from Ma, when I took sannyas, around the same time I took sannyas, from a, a pure shakta devotee, Jnana Shakti Swami. Unfortunately, he then passed away shortly thereafter. But he's with me still in the form of his instruction and influence, which brought me into the shakta cult the tantric shakta cult. I was already tantric, and I had already been blessed <laughs> numerous times by goddess. But as with so many experiences like that, at the time, I didn't really understand the significance. I didn't really get the meaning, the full depth of the meaning. I had to study and meditate and chant, and do many uh, sacrifices and many sevas for a long time. But now it's all beginning to come clear. The grand plan of life, the drama of salvation, as it all unfolds. And I'm sure this current experience is the same kind of thing. Uh, that's why I waited couple of months before I even started to talk about it. Because I'm sure it's going to have deep significance that I'm not aware of now, but will come to know in the future. So that's the big news. Um, I now, I consider myself a Shiva Bhakta. And of course, Shiva and Shakti are inseparable. Where you have one, you have the other. If you worship Ma, she's easier to approach, even though she's Durga, which means difficult to approach. By her grace, she becomes easy to approach. And she accepts our service. She accepts our devotion. And that leads, slowly or quickly, depending on your sincerity, to complete realization of Shiva. 
So now I'm absorbed in the study of the Shiva Purana. And uh, it's now it's 10 minutes into the video, so all the idiots have left. <laughs> we can talk about the secret things. In Shiva Purana, there is a passage in the, uh, the second part. Shiva Purana has four parts. And in the second part, there is a veiled prophecy in the form of a story about how Shiva got the name Tripura, Tripurari. Tripurari means he who destroyed the three cities. The three cities were created by the demons. And because they were following all the Vedic principles, even though they were demons and harassing the demigods and causing so much trouble all over the universe, Shiva refused to destroy them because they were rightly situated. See, this is how dharmic Shiva is. It's said in the Shiva Purana that Vishnu is sattvic on the outside, but rajasic on the inside. In other words, he doesn't really know what's going on. <laughs> but Shiva is rajasic on the outside. Uh, he appears to be a naked ascetic surrounded by ghosts and demons and so on, but he's fully sattvic on the inside. In other words, his intentions, his uh, thoughts, his actions are very pure. And, oh, Lord Brahma is rajasic through and through, <laughs> inside and out. <laughs> That's why he makes so many mistakes and has to be corrected. But anyway, Lord Shiva destroyed these three cities after a trick by Vishnu. What happened is Vishnu incarnated as a holy teacher. And he began teaching this atheistic philosophy that deviated the demons in the three cities from the pure Vedic teaching. And when I read this story, I was astonished that the philosophy he was teaching that was given in Shiva Purana is exactly the philosophy of the Buddha. Not even approximately, but precisely, down to the details. And then it hit me. This is an object lesson. This is a prophecy. He's saying that those who deviate from the Vedic principles and follow atheistic teachings like the Buddha's are going to be destroyed. And, and Shiva destroyed these three cities with one single arrow. Uh, because they had this tremendous weakness. And by exploiting that weakness, he was able to destroy the whole thing uh, with one shot. So this is the situation in the world today. The teaching of Buddha has spread, often not in the uh, uh, guise of Buddhism, but in the form of teachings such as the so-called Enlightenment in Europe, uh, since which the whole Western world has sunk into atheism, materialism, consumerism, and you know so many other isms that are against God, against nature even. So Shiva and Shakti are both very displeased. And so they will certainly cause the downfall of this atheistic civilization, this demoniac culture. Um, that means if you want to get through the war which is coming, uh, just in the next few years, I think, within 10 years at the most, 
you should establish yourselves in the Himalayas because everybody else is going to be severely distressed. Even some of the principles of Buddhism have been enshrined in the Indian constitution because the man who wrote it was a Buddhist. Bet you didn't know that, but it's true. So if you want to be, uh, I mean, everyone is going to suffer, but the people who are pure, who are following the Vedic principles and who live in pure places like the Himalayas are going to be inconvenienced the least. But in the long run, what really matters is that one should develop pure devotion for the Lord in any form. This leads naturally to meditation and enlightenment. And by the blessings of Shiva and Shakti, one can easily attain the highest enlightenment. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Oh.